Welcome to the show with no name for February the 8th, 2013. I'm Bob Going with Gavin Murdoch. Uh, I guess Jim Nakosha got snowed in today. He may have, may have. Yeah, there's, this there's... Is, uh, we're, uh, you know, I'm drinking out of my snowman uh, bunk here. <laughs> this is, uh, we're supposed to be getting the big one today. They, we are. Say. It's, the, it's, the it's on its way. Yeah. It's on either its a way. foot or a foot and a half or 10 inches or 16 inches or three feet. It's, uh, but it's not yet. That's the important uh, thing. Well, I don't know. I mean, I woke up this morning. It was snowing a little bit. What's it? Did you walk up or did you take the car? I took the car up and it's not snowing. Oh. Did you park in the driveway? Yes, I did. I, don't right. want, I didn't want to get right. towed. Okay. Very good. All right. It's no emergency, you know. Now, we, uh, I don't know, we may have a lawsuit uh, uh, pending here. Right? Uh-huh. I was uh, reading uh, uh, National Review Online this morning on the computer. And uh, the founder of National Review Online, Jonah Goldberg, uh, also with the American Enterprise Institute, uh, syndicated columnist and a swell fellow all in all, uh, uh, kind of announced as a sideline that he'd, uh, he'd uh, just completed another edition of the podcast with no name. Uh, with uh, John Podoritz and uh, Rob Long, I think, who used to be... Uh, writer for Cheers uh -huh. during, during the golden age of Cheers. He was one of the great comedy writers, a very funny fellow. And uh, I, you know, I dashed off an email to Jonah. I, uh, I said, uh, I'm sorry, I think we kind of own that name. Well, uh, it, it, there's a slight variation in it. It's a slight variation, but come on. It's not like he's not aware that the show well, with no name exists because I uh, sent him a link to it a couple of times. Well. Anyway, uh, Jonah's uh, of course, the author of a modern classic, Liberal Fascism, uh, and the more recent uh, uh, book he has out is uh, Tyranny of Clichés, uh, the autographed copy of which I couldn't find on short notice this uh -huh. morning. Uh, I'm really confused as to where it could be because I, I have it out to read and I... You don't know where you're out reading. I don't reading. know where I put it. I, it's not on the bookshelf next to my bed, which is where it should be. But. Anyway. But you have a young, young and running through the house, and she may have picked up to... Um... Oh, you're right. Absolutely right. That's probably exactly what happened, because she's constantly going to my bookshelf, picking up a book, and uh, making up a story as she... There you go. Yeah. See? Yeah. Very good. Thank you. You're welcome. All right. You're welcome. I, I don't know. That, that eases my mind a little, but doesn't help me a bit. <laughs> Can she retrace her steps? No. Okay. No, that's um. impossible. You know, she's a big fan of To Kill a Mockingbird. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't know why. Uh, I mean, she's five. She's five. It's, it's not well, like she really knows about Atticus Finch and whatever. Scout. Scout. Maybe she's a Scout fan. What the heck is her real name? Oh, I, Scout. I don't know if she ever had one, did she? Oh, yeah, 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 because it, it, comes in toward, it comes in at, toward the end. It's not Clarissa. That's the... You know, that's the girl in Hannibal Lecter, but... Uh, no, I don't... Uh, but it's uh, Jean Marie or something like that. Uh, because there's that great scene in the movie, which is also in the book, where uh, where she's up in the balcony with the with the black people mm -hmm. at the end of the right. trial, and the uh, and the the minister says to her, uh, Jean Louise. Jean, Jean Louise. Louise. Says, uh, stand up, Jean Louise. Your father is passing. <laughs> it was, it, Highly it, it, respected man for what oh. he did. He did. What? He did the right thing. What? Uh, you know, a great book made into a great movie. It's uh, doesn't often happen. It doesn't often happen. No, I mean, it it it, it was as uh, perfect a book as I've ever read, I, and I never read it till about a year or two ago, a couple of years ago. I picked it up for the first time. But I've always been a big fan of the movie. Uh, but I'd just never gotten around to reading it. And, of course, the kids had to read it in high school, yeah. so there was a copy floating around. And, uh, and I, I picked it up, and, uh, and, and it just grabbed me from the first sentence. Uh, there, there is not a page in that book that is not terrific. Uh, and, and, I, and, and it got to the point where I actually slowed down my reading of it because I didn't want but it to then. end. <laughs> I didn't want it to end. That's a good book, then. You wow. didn't read that in high school? Hmm? We read that in high school. I didn't, uh, for some reason. Uh, of course, it was, you know, it was pretty new. Uh, it came out in, what, 61, and the movie yeah. came out in 62 or something like that. They came out right away. Uh, yeah, we remember reading that. And, 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 you know, the, uh, 
uh, the, the, the friend who comes to visit in the summers to stay with the aunt was, was modeled after uh, their real friend, Truman Capote. And it, 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 it's always been suspected that uh, Harper Lee, who never wrote another book, uh, wrote the outline of this book, gave it to Truman I'm Capote, and he, and he fixed it. Uh, I mean, that's, that's a rumor. Who knows? Uh, but they, they, were, they were and remained good friends until his death. But she's still alive, and it's never written another book. And that is one of the, uh, truly one of the most terrific books of the 20th century. Uh, so, well, anyway, it's interesting. That, many people write many books that are not worth reading, and she yeah. wrote one that was, and, right. and, and is. And I, I left it at that. Yeah. Left it at that. Uh, you, you know, you, it's hard to figure what you would do. Uh, you know, you know, maybe when she dies, they'll find her 60 novels uh, sitting on the <laughs> shelf someplace. Uh, but boy, uh, did I ever tell you the story of uh, when my mother was teaching English at St. Mary's? Uh, that people were assigned to do book reviews. Uh, I was an avid reader, so I never had trouble doing book reviews. I did, it wasn't like like we were talking last week about the French Fair, I, I, mean, I, uh, I, I always had enough books read that I could do a book review on, on, on short notice or long notice, it didn't matter. Uh, but other people were not as conscientious or a reader, and it's, not, yeah. and it's not because I was a great student, it's because I, uh, I just like to read. So anyway, uh, the book review begins something like this. This is one my mother received. I think she was teaching sophomore English at the time. Uh, to, Kill a, to Kill a Mockingbird uh, is a story about uh, a southern white lawyer, Atticus Finch, parenthesis, Gregory Peck. <laughs> <laughs> Close parenthesis. <laughs> yeah. My mother calls a girl up to her desk after class and says, oh. Did, did you really read this book, or, or did you maybe just see the movie? I just saw the movie. I've <laughs> uh, been playing at the Tryon. Yeah. Uh, uh, you know, it's, usually cliff notes are better than the movies for writing a review from because the cliff notes are pretty accurate. Yeah. But I don't think when we did uh, To Kill a Mockingbird at, at Scully that the cliff notes had come out yet. I think that's one of the ones we really had to... Uh, had, had to read, unlike uh, Great Expectations and uh, a few other ones. Yeah, uh, Great Expectations was on the required reading list when yeah. I was, I th we read that as when I was a freshman, I think, yeah. and, it, and it still holds up. But, you know. it, it does, but I think it took us our whole freshman year to read it. Yeah, uh, that's that's it, you know, it's, uh, today I would read it uh, uh, tonight and maybe tomorrow morning a little bit. Yeah, uh, but, but, then, but, uh, yeah, but Dickens, was, uh, my appreciation for Dickens continues to expand. Every time I pick up something he's written, it's so well constructed, if nothing else. Uh, and, and of course, he was certainly imaginative. Uh, but he, Yeah, but he, he, was, he was writing right on about the uh, Victorian industrialization of uh, England at the end of the previous century. I usually yeah. say last century, but it's not as the previous century. And uh, it was a very hard time for the, the people of uh, uh, Great Britain. It was as had been the previous five thousand years. Uh, yeah. Yeah. yeah, but I think this made it worse because there were that more, many more people that were in that. Well, uh, right, that di and, and, and because and because the modern age of industrialization and wealth had uh, had proceeded at such a pace uh, that those who were left behind became all the more noticeable. Yes. I mean, in the old days, there was the Lord of the Manor and the starving serfs. Uh, but there was so much prosperity that came about that had never existed before at the end of the 18th and uh, uh, 19th centuries that uh, I, you know, obviously it caused some dislocations or yeah. just some plain noticeability. And you had people that were able to write about it, which you didn't have before. <laughs> In fact, the era allowed someone like Dickens to take up a career as a writer, which uh, otherwise, in the olden days, he would have had to have uh, been yeah. sponsored by uh, yes. some rich widow, right? <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, uh, you know, when, when you look at that, that era, how hard it was, because you had so many more people that 
had been displaced. They were all in the city and how wretched, yeah. filthy and, and yeah. difficult it, it was. You know, at least prior to that, the, the poor serf on the land could grow something, stash away and eat it. Here, these people had no access to any of that. No, didn't have access to clean water. Uh, sure. The infestation of uh, vermin in, in the, this, this well, and this the rampant they disease. They, they, they didn't understand disease. They didn't no. understand the germ. The germ theory disease didn't come till no. much, much later. No. So it and uh, yeah, and, and they hadn't even figured out how to uh, how to take the handle off the pump uh, at that at that point. Oh. Uh, well, it was, uh, they just knew that cities were disease ridden and the uh, country was less so. And but and the people who got sick deserved it. <laughs> Because of what they were. I mean, we we can't even fathom stuff like the the Great Plague. I mean, it wiped, it wiped out a third of uh, Europe, and, and uh, you know, whole it, it, you know, whole communities uh, just disappeared. And some of the the thought now is that because it wiped out such a huge number of, of folks in in Europe, it led to the increased. Uh, Prosperity, because you took so many people off the land, the the the, the lords lost so much. They, it it fostered the era of uh, giving land to the peasants because there was nobody to work the lands at all. Right, right, and uh, right, right. They had to start paying. Them. They had to start paying them, right. and it began. You know, well, yeah. And, and for those who survived, might have been a good thing. Those who died, for certainly those who it died, wasn't certainly a good thing. Wasn't. No, uh, and uh, obviously a lot of people lost relatives. There, I mean, the, the Great Plague. Uh, did a lot of things. Uh, one of one of which was uh, because of the very nature of plagues, it wiped out uh, a great number of the religious institutions, uh, the the abbeys and the mm -hmm. and the convents, uh, and uh, and wiped out a great deal of learning at the same time mm -hmm. because. Uh, in fact, in those days, the educated people were, I mean, the clerks were clerics. Uh, yeah. You know, the, the word comes from, uh, you, you'd go to the priest or the monk. Uh, they, were the, they were the learned people in your community. They were the ones who could read and write. And all of a sudden, you know, they're wiped out en masse. And uh, one of the results was uh, uh, one of the low eras of the church where, uh, you know, abuses were popping up and things like that because... Quite frankly, uh, all they had left was dumb people to be uh, made priests because uh, they didn't have enough. Uh, they didn't have enough priests to go around, and, and so the uh, the smart ones uh, were already dead, and uh, it, <laughs> and it led to uh, it, it led to the abuses that uh, resulted in the in the Reformation. Luther, Luther Reformation, uh, you know, and the, and especially when the. The, the ones in charge of the religious institutions began to think of them as personal fiefdoms as opposed to uh, mm -hmm. works of God. Yeah. Uh, so, anyway, that's, uh, that's that story. Uh, you see what you get on the show with no name, you probably don't get on any other kind of podcast, not even the podcast with no name. Uh, we, we cover everything. We cover er absolutely everything. It's very educational if you pay attention and listen. That's right. That's right, and uh, you know someday we'll discuss the Battle of Zama and. Uh, oh, yeah, we don't have enough time in today. No, show. not no, no. We haven't got enough time for the Second Punic Should, War today. No, no, no. Uh, but that's a great story. Uh, anyway, it's uh, a, the second great story because the First Punic War was the first great. story. Well, in the Third Punic War, of course, uh, trumped them all. Trumped them all because that's when they. That's when they destroyed Carthage and uh, and uh, and sowed it with uh, fifty miles of salt, salt or something. You know, sold the field. Uh, uh, one professor down in North Carolina, a history professor, I'm told, uh, said, "Those who say wars never accomplish anything ha haven't spoken to the city fathers of Carthage lately." <laughs> 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 well. Oh, wow! Those that were left. Well, let's see. Here's a. I don't know if you've been following this on. Uh, on the the Hal page on Facebook, but the uh, there's talk now that the that the old Mary Vanderveer house on Arnold Avenue may be torn down. Uh, they're gonna somebody's gonna take that corner and uh, build another uh, retail uh, 
plaza no, there. No, I did not. I did not see that. And uh, that's the, that's a little cottage. It's the first house on Arnold Avenue, uh, coming in from Market Street yeah. on the right, uh, behind the Vassies. Uh, it, it has a fascinating history. Aside from being associated with uh, Mary Vanderveer, who was a world class artist, uh, who did who had a studio there. The story of the building itself, her father was, uh, was a builder mm -hmm. in New Hampshire, and he was building during the heyday of Market Hill. Uh, among other things, he built Walter Elwood's house out on Belden's Road, uh, oh, I didn't know which that is connection. still there, uh, Walter, Walter Elwood's homestead. And uh, Mary Vanderveer had, been, had spent many years in Europe, in uh, Holland and such, uh, studying art, she studied under Whistler, uh, mm -hmm. uh, among other things, and perfecting her art. And she, he wanted her to come back to Amsterdam, so he built her uh, this cottage studio on Arnold Avenue. Now, the wood he got from a barn he was tearing down, which I think, if I'm not mistaken, was uh, uh, on the property that became Gardner Klein's estate and is now McDonald's, which would be ac right across so the street, street from here. Uh, the barn he had built many years previously and uh, no longer had a use for it, probably because they were building the Klein House at the time. Uh, but that barn had been built with lumber that he had salvaged from the Thomas Bunn farmhouse, which was the only house on Market Hill for many years. It goes back to the uh, late 1700s, I believe, or early 1800s. Uh, in any event, by the time he built this cottage for his daughter, the lumber that he used to frame it was already over 100 years old, and he said at the time, it, 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 well, it ought to be good for another 100 years, <laughs> and, and far more than another 100 years have passed. So the, the lumber in the house comes from the oldest oh. house on Market Hill, and is, it is like 200 years old at this point. Taken from an old growth forest. Isn't that great? Wow. Yeah. So what, what do they think about putting in there? Uh, I think it's another drugstore or something. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure what the story is. Uh, this is all prelude to because the, the discussion of house says, well, uh, what about, you know, can the house be saved? And in fact, it seems that the people buying the property have uh, no interest in the house and uh, wouldn't, uh, wouldn't mind if somebody Sorry. moved it somewhere else. So. The, uh, the museum board is considering it. Uh, if, it. If it becomes available, we may uh, decide to move it to the new location on Church Street. Uh, just, oh. just carry the house down the hill. Wow. Apparently it's not as expensive as I would have thought because it's not a very big... No, it's not. not a very big house. Uh, I imagine. suppose there's a question whether you could, go, if you could take it down Prospect Street, it'd be really short route, but yeah. it's... Uh, Boy, you'd have a... Or meadow, whole lot of meadows a little bit more, less of an incline. But any way you go, you got to go down a hill. Yeah, mar market is the same thing. The yeah, market, market is market is, steep. market is steep, but at least now it's uh, meandering a bit uh, since Boy. I rerouted it. But uh, wow, but that makes for a much We're, longer route and many more traffic lights to go under and things like that. Yeah, but wouldn't that be cool? Because uh, you know, that was her art studio, and we and the museum has seven or eight of her uh, of, of her paintings there, and there are more floating around town uh, that that are in private homes uh, that that you know could be gathered for a show, uh, and you can recreate her studio just like uh, Norman Rockwell's, and 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 she's largely forgotten. Uh, people, I mean, she, she was really uh, when I say world class, she was world class. In fact, uh, what was the movie I was watching? I think it was. Um, Woody Allen's uh, Midnight in Paris a couple of years ago. Uh, there's a scene where they're, they're at one of these outdoor things and there's uh, paintings for sale. One of them I swore was a Van Der Meer. Yeah. yeah. You know, it, it, if it wasn't hers, it was in her style. Uh, wow. Anyway. Yeah. Well, you know, again, but that just brings up the point we talked about earlier that what a rich heritage. Yep. this city has that is underground, that is hidden, that people have no idea yep. what 
what took place here and, and you where, know, where some are some of it people are in people's attics. <laughs> yeah, you know, people don't have any idea of what a truly remarkable community we live in. And we were talking off camera about uh, about my book, which you know deals with some of the. Uh, obviously, when I start my history in 1941 and, and start going backwards, we're going back quite a ways. Uh, so I, I, I got a lot of the, uh, the I do a chapter on the, the background of the town, mm -hmm. uh, and it really is amazing. It, it, it's absolutely amazing, uh, the production that came out of here. You know, the, there's a thing, uh, a Board of Trade report from 1906 that I have that talks about how many yards of carpet were made every year, how many brooms were made every year, enough underwear to, uh, uh, to uh, uh, clothe everyone in America, uh, 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 how many million pearl buttons were made at, the, at our pearl button factories. Mm -hmm. Million, and we're talking millions, and then people were sewing those on on cards one at a time. <laughs> yeah, that's how, you know, they, that's that's how, how they, they made their living. Yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, they, they, I don't know what their title was, but there were there were button carters or something. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, it, it, it's it's just flabbergasting. Uh, those uh, mendits that were made by Colette's. Yeah. Oh. Now you've got to think this is a niche market of, of, of niche markets, but. Uh, uh, these mendets were uh, were made to fix pots that had holes in them. Rather than go out to Walmart yeah. and buy a new pot, uh, it was basically like two washers with a nut and bolt, and uh, you sealed it up, and uh, now you got now you got to seal the hole is gone, the rust hole is gone, and you keep doing that until there's uh, mendets on mendets. Yeah, people well, didn't throw stuff away. They were producing like half a million a week of those things. Uh, Holy mackerel! Yeah, they were the. That's uh, a lot of pots to. Yeah, they were the popeel fishermen uh, of, uh, that's of, right. of their time. That's you know, right. The the, the uh, infomercial yep. producers. Uh, and then they then during World War II they were making uh, canteen covers. Yeah, well, they're using they're using the uh, uh, the canvas that that they were producing here. Yeah. You know, in a variety of ways. You know, that's probably, that's probably right. Probably just came down the street from uh, uh, from either uh, Mohawk or the Herald. Of course. Mill. Yeah. Uh, yeah. There's a. You know, I I I have got a number of stories that are currently in the book that may go out. Uh, what we were talking off camera is I, I I printed my book up to see where I was at this point, so I'd make it easier to edit. How many how many pages when you? Uh, it oh, it ran. Uh, it ran 205, eight and a half by 11 pages. Uh, so, I mean, I got a lot of room to maneuver here. Uh, and that's without the acknowledgments and all that uh -huh. stuff. Uh, this is just straight text. So, I, obviously, I got a lot of material, uh, but an awful lot is going to come out. It's, it's just, uh, it's, it's just, just, just a mess. <laughs> uh, well, that's, that's what anyway, I was, I was going somewhere with this. Uh, about the oh, 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 yeah. These all these stories about uh, guys would be like in North Africa or the South Pacific, and they'd be issued blankets. And, and in North Africa, where it was cold in, in winter, the uh, uh, the guy the guy was issued two blankets. One was from Bigelow, and one was from Mohawk. <laughs> uh, and uh, then there was a guy who. Uh, whose ship was sunk and they lost everything. They, they had absolutely nothing uh, and, uh, and the nearest supply depot was a couple thousand miles away. So they were uh, basically uh, uh, borrowing uniforms from the Allies and things like that just to keep them going uh, uh, from other units. So it was all a mishmash <laughs> of yeah. stuff. But uh, he knew his day of redemption had come when he got uh, fresh underwear for the first time in a month or two months, uh, made by the Chalmers Knitting Mills of Amsterdam, <laughs> New York. Yeah. I mean, it, you know, they, they saw a piece of the hometown wherever they went. Uh, it's, it's funny because uh, Monday, Misha came home from school and he had a variety of projects they had to complete this week. Of course, he probably got it last Monday, but I just saw it this Monday. And he picked a one on, do one on Amsterdam. And so he went through and 
pulled information here or there. It's certainly not as well written as yours. <laughs> yours is, but uh, he talked about. You don't the, know how the, badly the, written mine is at the moment. Uh, it'll talk, be better. Talked about the carpet mills and and, yeah. and things and uh, uh, the button company and uh, the broom companies. And I gave him a picture of a uh, of guy when they produce the. Um, the Wheel of Life carpet. Oh yeah, Wild yeah, yeah, Astoria. Yeah, yeah. So we uh, we, I got a we made a copy of that. of that. I got a picture of that. I uh, pulled pulled off the internet that I may get in Did the book you? somehow. Yeah. I wonder if it's the same one that that we have. The one with uh, the the uh, the bosses standing around it. Oh no no no! This you is uh, this, this is just the, just the carpet. Just the carpet. Uh -huh. Now this has got as long as you're looking into this, I I can't quite figure this out. Apparently, the carpet, the Wheel of Life carpet, was, as far as I can tell, was laid over the original mosaic of, of, of the same subject matter. In other words, it was a copy of the mosaic, and they decided to put a rug in. and they, Over the top uh, of it. On top of it. And then, like in the 1980s or something, they, were, they, they ripped uh, the, carpet the, up. the subsequent carpet up and found the original uh, mosaic. mosaic underneath. I, I believe that's correct. Uh, I believe that's correct. And... It was actually, uh, there's something on the internet about the original rug, or at least the significant portion, which was the Wheel of Life, uh, going on the national tour. And there, were, there was a, uh, a reference of it being on display like in Idaho someplace uh, in, the, in, the, in the 40s. Uh, so I, I don't know that it was how long it actually uh, was, was in the there? Waldorf Astoria before they uh, replaced it. Uh, I don't know, but do we've, I've got this picture. But I, I do have the statistics on how, how, how many yards of carpet. Uh, it's, it's, it's phenomenal. And, and how many, it took uh, uh, months to, to weave it. Yeah. Uh, it's well, so intricate. Yeah, yeah. But we got a picture with uh, the bosses standing around it, guys in there, and they've got the carpet down there. And also someplace I've got a, like a... Uh, a shot down of the of the carpet in one of the the books that I have, and uh, Mohawk put it out, and they put a whole lot of other rugs in there as well, not just uh, oh. the wheel wheel of light. You have an original photograph of it, or was it one of the magazine prints you have? No, I have a it's an original of, of the, the the carpet with uh, with the guys. Oh, that's the one I want. You want that? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that'll go in the book. Okay. See, oh. this is how we do things on the show with no name. Not to be confused with the podcast with no name, and with I my friend Jonah Goldberg. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. I'll uh, next time we come up, I'll I'll bring it up or I'll drop it off to you. Now you're off next week. We're right? off next week. Yeah, we're going to be down in Newark, New Jersey at a bagpipe uh, solo competition. Uh, all right. Which is a good timing because uh, all the stuff will be gone by next week. Oh, well, hopefully. Or it may be gone by this afternoon. The way it looks, I don't know. We'll 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 see how that goes. It has stopped. It, it has. Yeah. It, there was nothing when I went to work this morning. So I wonder why school is off today. They were throwing the dice thinking they were going to get hammered. Because one of the things, uh, they say, well, why don't they go in and send the kids home early? Well, that's the hardest thing in the world to do. Well, that's true. Because one, yeah. the guys who are bus drivers, that's not their full-time job. And after they drop the kids off, they, right. they go to work, number right. one. And number two, you cannot send an elementary child home to an empty house. All right. So which right. means you may have to make all these phone calls and right. find out where these kids are going. So it, it's a real hard thing. And I think everybody closed. You know, yeah. Fonda, yeah. Perth, Brad Alban, everybody in anticipation yeah. is because the last thing that we I'd heard last before I went to bed was that the storm was going to really pick up this afternoon, which is, well, that's going to be bad sending the kids home. So I think they, they threw the dice and see what happens. And sometimes it comes up craps and sometimes it just comes up crappy. You well, you know, if it starts coming heavy at noon, uh, then they made the right decision. Yeah. Uh, I don't well, think there's any question about yeah, that. Uh, yeah, because you know, unlike when we went to school, it was your problem to get to school and your problem to get home. Now, because I, I cause the schools bus that. everybody, it's you know they don't say, "Geez, thank you very much." They say, "Sue you if something happens." Now you know where I lived on Trinity Place, yes, across yeah. from McDonald's, so yeah. what's now McDonald's, across from the Klein Mansion. Yeah, uh, I used to. If you drive from that house, or where the house used to be, uh, to the Bishop Scully, it's a fair distance. Uh, I would walk across Market Street, go yeah. between the houses on Market Street, cut down to Elizabeth Street, go down yeah. Hampton Street, 
And then I'm right at the broom factory, and I take the shortcut through the broom factory, across the, the, the broom factory bridge, across the creek, or Bun Creek, uh, up the hill. Uh, then I go up uh, around Batistis up to Second Avenue, uh -huh. take Second Avenue to Forest Avenue, and Bartizel's, I think, was still there yeah. in the warehouse. And I'd go behind Bartizel's warehouse into Scully Gully, Gully. And, and, and take the trails through Scully Gully right to the back of the school. school. 20 minutes. 20 minutes, and if I walked the other way, it probably would have taken 40. If you went 45. down all the way up church, yeah. 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 I, I, I took the, the Hen Glen. Well, yeah, we're that's, up the, other, that's Heights, the other way. We went, yeah, I could have done down. that, too. Because yeah. uh, over in Henry Heights, it was yeah. a little bit longer but, track. Uh, now, but one day we had a, a wicked snowstorm, but it had cleared, and so the school was in session, and I... I chose to take that route again. <laughs> Waist deep snow, at least. And, you know, it was okay till till I got to the gully, and, and I just plodded through. Uh, and, 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 you know, my legs got heavier and heavier. And, you know, soaking wet. Wetter, and, and of course, I'm wearing my uniform uh, blazer. By under, golly, you better be wearing my, your underneath uniform. Underneath my winter jacket, and uh, and and finally. Finally, I get to the back of the school, and uh, and my classmates see me coming. And they start cheering, and uh, <laughs> somebody opened the window, and I just I, I just rolled in through the window and, and brushed myself off. <laughs> yeah, yeah. We, you, you got there because you're supposed to get there. Yeah. There, there's no sense. You didn't call in. I'm not coming today or anything like that. You no. went because you were supposed to go, and uh, <laughs> that's uh, they expect you to go. All right. Yeah. So now I got a question for you. Yes, sir. Uh, is our mayor nuts or what? Uh, th I mean, this is a serious question. I mean, you know, it's not a question of competence or anything else, but uh, sanity. Yeah, her behavior is really getting bizarre. Uh, uh, that uh, meeting the other night, uh, it was. You know, whether, what you, whether you like what Diane Hanson Bueller has to say or what Chet Watroba has to say or anybody else who regularly comes to these meetings, you know what? They got a right to be heard under, under the rules of the council and to... Uh, you don't treat them with such disrespect. You, you know, uh, as, as uh, whoever wrote the editorial, which I think was Charlie, uh, pointed out, you, you know, uh, Diane still had like a minute to go, and the mayor spent half of that telling her she only had a minute to go, and she better get, get done with it. And she better not go overboard. And blah, blah, blah. Then counts down the last ten uh, right, seconds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, the way to handle that, is, uh, a normal person would handle that, is fairly simple. You, you get to the end of the five minutes, you say, "I'm sorry, thank you. You know, your your five minutes are up." You want another thirty seconds to wrap up? Go ahead, and uh, and then you're done with it. Instead, you you start this confrontation, and then you want to bring in the chief of police, and then everybody's uh, ire is up. And of course, it was because she can't stand being challenged uh, abs. when she's been caught doing something wrong. It, it's 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 the same thing in the White House in Washington. You it, cannot it have a difference of opinion. You cannot right. show the other side of the coin. Right without raising their hackles and their ire and, and their, their, it really shows their view of the common man and they hold him in such disdain yeah. for how being dare that. How, 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 how dare you? Even. Yes, it's, it's, the same, it's the same thing and, and she's just the uh, embodiment example. of it. Yeah. Absolutely she is, you right. know, and, and she's She's such such a phony baloney when when she talks. You listen to her when she's on the radio, you know, and it's he he ha ha, and it's it's so disrespectful. Yep. You know, I I, I don't know. It just uh, it, it's, and, it's everything and then, government and, should not be. And then and then you know it's in today's paper about how she's going after. Uh, Richie Leggero yeah. about the, uh, the oh, do club. they serve beer at the bocce <laughs> club? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Do you have you know, a license? The, you know, and, and why is this being brought up at the Common Council meeting? I mean, if, if there's a problem, why isn't she having the chief of police uh, contact the uh, president of the bocce club, uh, Port Jackson Bocce Club and, and Southside Veterans Association, it's, uh, which jointly hold uh, the lease on the property? Uh, you know, have a little chat. You know, I mean, this is... It, it, it's wrong. Uh, 
uh, yeah, and they. Uh, it's wrong. But uh, you, you know she's only doing it to put pressure on the alderman to get her to, to get him to do something else that she wants him to do because that's the way she operates. I mean, in her first term, uh, she had. Uh, Three of the uh, five aldermen had uh, serious code violation problems, and 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 she got she got their votes every single time as as a result, you know, because none of them none of them were uh, charged with code violations, but they were all sitting there just waiting. There's only one of them left that uh, that's still going on. No, oh, it's 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 a comedy council, is is what it is. It's not a comedy council. Uh, I, uh, I had a nice uh, brief chat with Valerie Beekman uh, uh, a couple of weeks ago up at uh, St. Mary's. They had uh, what was going on there? Pancake breakfast. Was it? Was it the pancake breakfast? Yeah, I guess it was the pancake breakfast. Yeah, I was thinking I didn't go to the pancake breakfast because I don't eat pancakes, but I did go. Yeah, I had the eggs. Yeah, the eggs. And everybody else's sausage <laughs> and potatoes. <laughs> Uh, and somebody else got my pancakes. It all worked out. You know, it's always good to go with the crowd. There you go. Uh, and you know, you know, she came in pretty cold uh, on this. I, I think she's getting a grasp of where she is at this point because uh, I certainly got that impression talking to her. And I've always had the deepest respect for her. Uh, you know, as a, as a mother, as a citizen, uh, uh, whatever, as a you know, working woman of the community, uh, and just as a sweet lady. I mm -hmm. mean, she, you know, she's really a good person. Uh, so, you know, I supported her in that election, and you know, it turns out she was running unopposed, but uh, I supported her anyway. So she ran for the school board some years ago. Uh, you know, she. She was treated with total disdain by one of the aldermen at that meeting, and and she finally had enough and uh, and spoke back. Yeah, she sure did. But it, but it just digresses so easily in oh. those meetings. Well, it's, yeah, it, it starts at the top because if you if you're not uh, if the person conducting the meeting is being a baby. It's going to be a bad meeting, <laughs> and she was being a baby. And and it turns out, uh, in most respects, Diane was absolutely correct on uh, everything that's going on there. The Common Council never approved the use of that building for any purpose. Never approved. Uh, 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 there's nothing in the budget to provide uh, for, anything, for yeah. anything in there, including the power for that for that matter. Uh, although I don't think anybody can complain about them leaving the power and the heat on if necessary. But I said at the time uh, that given the history of that building that they should unload it as quickly as possible and, uh, and, and I still believe that. So instead of going through the Common Council, she then sets up her own organization, her own private organization, private foundation, uh, uh, to run everything there, and now, and now she starts advertising for teaching classes, and, 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 and wait a minute, where's all this money coming from uh, to, to pay these, uh, well, we're going to take it, uh, we're, uh, everything is circumventing the Common Council, exactly, like or the Recreation Commission, or whatever. Is she creating a conflict of interest down there? There's all that? kinds of conflicts down there. It, she, she's just treating it as her personal fiefdom. And, uh, and of course, that's what they had done with the Riverlink Park uh, two years ago when she was involved with that, when it first started. Uh, that uh, they set up the Waterfront Foundation uh, uh, to run that, and uh, then the whole concept kind of petered out after after a period of time. The city ended up taking it over again. Uh, but uh, yeah, Robbie Spagnuolo, who, who I like and admire, uh, you know, is is forced into the middle of these things. Uh, and, and you know, and, and and he's telling the common council the other night that uh, uh, everything done down there is being done under under the auspices of the city recreation uh, department. department, and that's an uh, that's an outright lie. It, it, everything being done down there is uh, done with this board of this foundation that she set up with, and she appointed the members of uh, it, it, with nothing. Uh, you know, it's a whole city build, building being used in, for a not-for-profit purpose without any authorization, authorization. whatsoever. 
and that is wrong. You know what? I don't care whether it's a good idea or a bad idea. That's not be, what we're talking about. It should be done the right way. It could be a terrific idea. It could be a wonderful idea. I love culture. I love adding culture to the community. Uh, it may, be, it may be that it can be done at a reasonable price uh, uh, and, and get a lot of things going there, and it could be, could be a wonderful thing. But don't be so arrogant that you go out there and spend city funds uh, without any authorization. Uh, any authorization whatsoever and then demand that the Common Council uh, um, uh, uh, fix what, what, what you didn't have to do in the first place. I mean, she carpeted the whole place without any, anything in the budget for it. Now who's going to pay for the carpet? Well, you know what? If the Common Council says nobody, nobody pays for it. Well, and that, you know, now, if, if we had a city controller, or, or if we had somebody operating the controller's office who wasn't uh, under the direct thumb of the mayor, uh, this would not have, uh, the purchase order for the carpet would not have been approved in the first place. Mm -hmm. They would have just said, no, I'm sorry, there's nothing in the budget for this. You have to get Common Council approval. But instead, she just goes ahead and does it, paints the whole place, uh, and, and all this. Would, it's absolutely wrong. Yeah. Absolutely wrong. And, and and then then she blames the council, or she blames citizen Hatzenbuehler uh, for uh, bringing this for up. the problem. Which no, is you know, and ridiculous. Val was trying to make that point. You know, she's. I think it's, it might be a great idea, but there's a process that you must follow. There's a way to go about it, the pro a proper way, and to do anything else is disingenuous, yep. and it certainly is not the kind of example you want to be setting. You know, if there's people looking to come into this community, they're going to look and say, "What the heck is going on there?" Right. Right. I don't think it does her any good for her lobbying for that position with the Canal Corp either to pull stunts like this or to act that way in public. I mean, plus on, on television, you know, I mean, it's all... Uh, it's, it's all there. Know. It's on Memorex. It is. It's there for the world to see. Yeah. I well, guess it is. I, don't know. I, I could have recorded it. I, didn't. I, should have. <laughs> I, should, I should start doing that. But you didn't know what kind of show you were missing, though. So yeah. Anyway, so uh, uh, if Jim was here, he could tell us about it because he, he monitors his stuff. Yeah. That's, that's his department. So if I didn't cover it thoroughly, it's just because that's not your bailiwick. Not my bailiwick. Uh, Anything in the school board I should know about? Uh, uh, nothing's happened since last week. We've got a school board meeting coming up uh, this Wednesday, our monthly meeting. Uh, there is a uh, uh, a program up at Lich Literacy Academy Tuesday nights, their uh, annual talent show. If people uh -huh. want to get out and see the new auditorium. The now, is this a, m a middle school talent yeah, show? Uh, yeah, the high school had their talent show right around Christmas time, and now the middle school's having theirs. And this Those is the are first always time. good, too. And right? this is the first time they've been able to do it at the, in the auditorium at the middle school in a long, long time. The last few years, they've had to go up to the, the high school, but they've got it all done. Um, it, it's, it's beautiful. And... Uh, I think at this board meeting coming up, we're going to be uh, uh, naming the uh, auditorium. Uh, it's been proposed. Well, you know how I, I feel about that. Yes, I, yes, I do, and All I right. think that those are good thoughts. Uh, you know, there's a lot of, there were a number of uh, worthy candidates brought up. Uh, in my humble opinion, the least worthy one, uh, and it didn't get picked, fortunately, uh, was the uh, Kurt Douglas uh, auditorium. Uh, I. People brought that up, and I just, I just cringed at it. Um, you know, it's just great that he grew up in Amsterdam, but on that that's stage. it. Yeah, on, 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 that, on that stage. stage, yeah. But other than that, that's uh, where you got to start. Uh, uh, nothing. And I you know, that, uh, we're sitting here in the uh, Cy Fultman <laughs> Memorial Studio. Uh, up, up until a couple weeks ago, this was his bedroom here, and passed away. Uh, I, this is just an example of Cy at his mischievous best. Uh, you may recall some years ago, 10, 15 years ago, maybe more, uh, uh, there was a big splash in the paper where Kirk Douglas donated $1,000 to the Amsterdam Free Library, uh, thanking them for the start he got hanging out there as a uh -huh. kid and all that. Yeah. Right? And it was uh, all the headlines and stuff like that. Now, uh, Cy, who was a most frugal man, I believe I said in my eulogy, he was the most frugal man I've ever met. Mm -hmm. uh, quietly went down to the library and wrote them a check for two thousand dollars. <laughs> One of them. Good, Just good for Cy. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, oh, good, good for him. 
his brother fell was in uh, Izzy's class. Uh, you know, I, I got the yearbook out uh, researching my, my books. Uh, and just before Izzy Dembski is Walter DeGudis. And Izzy Dembski's list of accomplishments is so broad that it runs over completely over Walter DeGudis's and, the, and whoever was underneath him as really? well. Yeah, I mean, it was just so big. Uh, you know, he was, you know, treasurer of the class and da da da. And uh, uh, it, it, it says, uh, 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 some, the, the quote was, to, to not know him is to mark yourself unknown, or something like that. Uh, uh, I mean, he, was, he had already developed that kind of personality mm -hmm. and following that he, he just dominated that page. Walter DeGudis had uh, like one line, Red Cross volunteer or something like that. Uh, and DeGudis was, uh, was killed in the war. Uh, I think he was in a bomber that went down, uh, which is how he got into my first book. And it, it says, his quote was, uh, lost in the quiet hallways of the past or something like that. And, and, and it's almost spooky, <laughs> you, you, you know? Yeah. You know, he's, uh, here, he is, here he is, a guy who died for his country, who really is lost, uh, lost to history, certainly compared to the guy who's right beneath them uh, in, the, in the yearbook. Uh, wow. Yeah. Some of that stuff telling. is, uh, yeah. you, know, you know, read in the light of what subsequently happens, there was a... Uh, Where do you find such men? Yeah. There, uh, one of them was... Uh, Fellow who was killed in an airplane accident. You know, the train. You know, half the guys who were killed from here were died in training exercises. Right. And when you when you start putting them together and you realize that you know, maybe a third of the guys from Amsterdam killed uh, were died in airplanes in the United States. Uh, it, it's you, you realize how dangerous a profession it was. Uh, anyway, his high school quote, and I can't remember the guy's name. It was either Wojcik or Wojcik? Wojcik, I think. Uh, it said. Uh, this is like 1939. Uh, everyone who does his best is a hero. Yeah, how about that? Here's a guy doing his best, dies in the line of duty, didn't kill any Germans, didn't uh, didn't seize any territory, no. didn't uh, uh, didn't do anything spectacular. All he did was die, but he did his best, and he was a hero. Yeah. Oh. A lot of people like that. Yeah. And uh, uh, Ed Ed Edward Partika, his quote was, if it can be done, I can do it. Right? He's up in Alaska. And uh, I guess, uh, uh, I don't know whether it was another ship or, or, or one of their whale boats or something had gone ashore uh, and been wrecked, and the and these guys, and they they were sent to rescue these guys mm -hmm. off off the north end of this island in the Aleutians, in winter. Uh, and he volunteers to, to go out to go out and uh, and get them, along with you know a few other people, a handful of other people. So they take another whaleboat out. They're wrecked going into shore. Uh, so he comes into, he makes it to shore, dripping wet. In fact, the guys he was rescuing rescued him. Uh, they, they they started a bonfire, but now this hurricane strength winter squall uh, squall comes up, and and their ship has to pull out of the harbor and get out to sea for fear of being dashed uh, dashed rocks. They have to find safe harbor uh -huh. somewhere else. So they leave these guys to their own devices. Ten miles on the other side of the island, they know that there's a weather station or something, or an army base or something. So they, so they set out for this, and the weather gets worse and worse, and it gets to the, uh, 
uh, gets to the point where uh, uh, where they can't even see where they're going, and 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 where the guys just lose it. You know, they they just. Uh, 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 oh, so, a, so so they, they can't walk any further. Like a hypothermia, so, so, yeah, yeah, hypothermia is setting in. So what they were doing is two of them would move forward. One would go back and pick up the other guy and bring him forward. Uh, and, and this way they kept going. And then, uh, then at some point, Partika wanders off and is never seen again. And, and I think only like two guys out of the twelve make it mm -hmm. finally make it to the base because it's it is it is like you know, the winds are like fifty miles an hour in the winter with in a, in a blinding snowstorm. And you're wet. Uh, and they're wet. Uh, yeah. So they uh, they do uh, they do eventually get there and they set out the search parties. Whether they ever found the body, I don't know. It wasn't just him. There were several others uh, that didn't make it as well. But. Uh, uh, but there, but there, you know, there's his attitude in high school. If it can be done, I can do it. And when it, when they needed somebody to do it, he said, I'll "If do it, it can be done, I can do it." And I'll, let me try. Well, last week you were mentioning uh, about a funeral that's coming up. Have you heard any more about that? About what? Uh, the funeral for the. Oh no, uh, no, I haven't. I haven't heard a word about it. Although I have already started revising my book to uh, <laughs> to, to accommodate the eventuality. Uh, uh, yeah. I, It'll be great. It, what we're talking about is that uh, it appears that uh, one of the Amsterdam World War II heroes has had his body identified on uh, distant soil, and it uh, and the family contacted me because there's talk that there would be repatriation of the body here, something that was supposed to have been done in 1947, but they couldn't find the body at the time. So, uh, so that will be. The, yeah. late, the latest Amsterdam World War II funeral. That'll be the last of your book. This is a, and this is a guy, uh, this is another guy who graduated in 39 from uh, Wilbur Lynch. Yeah. Great class. And, and all, <laughs> I didn't have much trouble finding most of the people from my, but well, you know there were 88 from Amsterdam High who died in the war, the graduates of Amsterdam High who died in the war. Some were the old Amsterdam High, mm -hmm. uh, a few, not not many, because you know they. Well, uh, Lynch opened when 30, 33, something like that. Yeah. Thirty-two, thirty-three. Uh, Frank Marticella was in the last class of the old Amsterdam High, believe it or not. And uh, because he practiced law into his nineties, uh, you uh, really uh, and uh, and never looked it. Uh, you, 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 the, that thing is thought is just amazing to me that that he made it that far. Uh, well, how, how much time we got here? Uh, I got about three minutes left. Three minutes? Yeah, they got uh, because of the uh, the weather. The uh, uh, they're they're closing down the facility over there, and we have to go and get the guys picked up and brought them home. So and it's my it's my duty. It's your so duty to go to, back to work. Yeah, eh? go back to work and pick early. up the guys and early and pick them up and bring them back and we're gonna stop get something. Oh, you out have of to way. pick them up. I have to go pick them up. Yeah. Oh, and yeah. what happens if you don't pick them up? They have to stay overnight in the uh, facility. There's, there's, no, <laughs> there's no place to stay overnight in the facility. <laughs> but I got them picked up because they're um, they're they're going grounding all transportation this afternoon at 11:30. So we have to get them and pick them up and get them home before they stop uh, being able to transport. Oh. Oh, well, I understand why you're doing the transporting. Don't you, don't you have buses to do that? No, some of the guys don't take buses. No. Won't, won't take buses they, they, or don't they, take it's buses? A, they, they don't take buses. Uh, some, depending upon um, their capabilities, where they can take uh, city transportation or we have to do transporting. And a couple of my guys have to transport. So uh, it's, it's always good to see them pick them up from work. They always come home happy. and. They're happy to get out of work? Yeah, and sometimes even happy to see me when they get yeah. out of work. When they're you getting know? out of work, sure. Yeah. So. sure. Well, all right then. Uh, 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 we're cutting it short this week, and uh, you know, we, have to, we have to prepare for the uh, blizzard here at Casa Bob as well. Uh, fortunately, has not started yet. Oh, oh, I just saw a couple of flakes, a couple more flakes. You can see a lot oh, of ones all over Amsterdam. There's a lot of flakes in Amsterdam. There are a lot of flakes here. Uh, yeah. George Fipka used to have a whole, <laughs> whole uh, photo album full of them, actually. Flakes. Yeah, <laughs> it was great. It was a uh, 
He'd, he'd keep, take his camera with him on patrol and yeah. uh, whenever he ran into one of the, one of the flights. <laughs> one of the color, colorful... Colorful characters. Uh, colorful characters. That's uh, right. He'd snap That's the right. pictures. Right. And we, I won't be here next week. It'll be in You'll not be here next so week. The 22nd will be the wow. next possibility. Yeah, well, maybe we'll find Jim. Maybe we'll do a show so. next week. But uh, I haven't heard anything more about the uh, the radio show. So oh, okay. Uh, the, well, I know you're in negotiations, and uh, hopefully we can pick up some parking space. Right. You yeah, know. we need at least uh, you know, the parking, uh, our own private parking space. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. But I, I'm sure they can work that out. There, uh, there's a few spaces down there that are not being used. I don't know. Is there, uh, is there uh, the hot dog place still open down there? Or not? Uh, no. Yeah. No, no hot dog place. Yeah, I, was, I think we should get some free passes to that as well. Oh, that'd be good. In the old days, we used to get the, used to be able to get those breakfast sandwiches down there back when uh, my wife's cousin uh, Ginny was uh, running it. That was that was nice. Yeah. Oh, we paid for them. I don't know. I don't want to. But that was the old. That was before we became podcasters. Yeah. Well. You know, our prices going up. Right, we it's don't come. We don't come cheap. We do not come cheap. No more. No. No more. But we're worth it. We are worth it because this is the show with no name. <laughs>